have been in research my whole life and I have never done something that really had an impact. When I started studying wildfires, I learned that we were using equations in models that had been used since the 1970s. The models that were used, they did a really good job of determining how the fire was going to spread through the ground but they didn't know how the ashes and the plume was going to create embers that were going to create secondary fires. Embers are these red hot pieces of material that get lifted up by the fire and can start new spot fires. These embers are very dangerous because they can drift from house to house to house. Understanding how nature works, I think, is, is one of the major challenges uh, left in physics and fire is one example of that system that is very difficult to model, to understand, and to predict. Fire behavior is determined by three main components. It's determined by the topography of the landscape, like the slope, the elevation, and the, and the aspect. It's determined by nearby vegetation, what are called fuel models, and it's also determined by weather, wind and precipitation and humidity, temperature. We're still mainly using traditional models like the Rothamel equation, which uses variables to predict surface fire spread that are based on empirical evidence. But factors that involve atmospheric boundary layers, winds, and ember transport are notoriously difficult to predict. These can make all the difference in a rapidly evolving wildfire situation. We collect information from all the sources we can in real time and inform first responders where the fire is going and where there's a high risk of damaging properties and especially people. We're using machine learning to help estimate probability of ignition. Once those embers do land, depending on all the weather conditions, all the topographical conditions, we can estimate a probability of ignition value to each of these spots. Before Google Cloud, we had this code that was thousands and thousands and thousands of lines and it had to be run from one computer. We knew it worked, we knew it did amazing things, but now we had to take it to the hands of the firefighters on the field. We chose to use Google Cloud because we knew we can get our product to the end user quickly. Products like Cloud Run, Kubernetes, be able to visualize what it's outputting. Google Cloud made that very easy to do with their products. And Gemini is helping us scour the web for all historical fires that have happened. We can collect them into database and just look at certain variables that we're interested in studying. We're sending this data through BigQuery, having that uh, data processed by Vertex AI. That's where the post analysis comes from. That's how we're gonna train our models. That's how we're gonna uh, make it more efficient, faster. With more variables, running predictions demands more computational power. And our models were just too computationally heavy to run on local devices in the field. But with Google Kubernetes Engine, we could run thousands of instances on Google Cloud and provide our users in the field near real-time predictions. All they need is a device running a browser. The work here is at the forefront of wildland fire modeling by bringing together the traditional models with new computational techniques and putting that together in a package that produces for a user a rapid and useful assessment of risk. AI gives companies like us, smaller companies, the opportunity to break the status quo and build something amazing. And now that we have this big pipeline of data coming in in real time from drones, from sensors, from phones, from satellites, and going into prediction models that can give you predictions in a second, I think we can expand to any natural disaster. <laughs>